Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are going to look at how we can convert a single injection engine to a multiple injection engine. Now before you, you see a diesel engine, a direct injection diesel engine. And if we clicked on its injector, we can see it's currently set at total fuel air ratio injector. And it's got a fuel air ratio as input as well as start of injection. Now we want to change it to a multiple injection injector, but before we do, we first need to go and have a look at exactly the fuel flow, the amount of fuel and its open duration of the single fuel injection system. So in our outputs, we're going to add a graph. We're going to have a look at the injector mass flow and we're going to run it. Now looking at this graph, we can clearly see that um, there's one injection event and the mass flow in kilograms per hour is approximately 38.5 kilograms per hour injection flow rate. We can also see that the injection starts at approximately 10 degrees before top dead center. All right, so now that we know what the flow rate is, we can go back to our model. We can change the injector type to multi-pulse mass per injection or multi-pulse mass flow rate. I'm going to go with the multi-pulse mass per injection. And then you will see the options change. And there's now a bunch of different things that is required of us. Most notably here at the bottom is the pulse shape. So let's create a new one and let's edit it and see what it requires. So we're going to open up our table and immediately you can see we've got a table with a number one to the left and we have pressure, injection pressure, start of injection, the rise, the plateau, the fall, rise one, rise two, and then the mass in milligrams. Now this is where you're going to input all your injection events. Now WAVE can take up to eight injections. So you can add a bunch of rows here, depending on how much fuel injections you want to simulate. Now, if we look at our cases for the single fuel injection case, we can see that there's been specified an injection duration of 21.1 degrees. We've also been given the start of injection. You can see here it is explicitly set to 7.6 degrees before top dead center. And now we need to go and convert this injection duration and the engine speed which is set to 2000 to a value in mass. So this table requires that we input a mass of fuel that will be injected per in fuel injection event. So th this requires a bit of calculation. Now I'm showing you my little Excel spreadsheet that I created and you can see for the fuel flow, I have gone and assumed 38 kilograms per hour. I've then converted that to grams per second and I've taken the injection duration as 21.1 degrees as we got from our cases table. Next, we are going to have a look at the engine speed of 2000 RPM. Now, this is quite important because the injection duration will obviously increase or decrease based on the RPM value. And for this example, we're only going to look at 2000 RPM. So I'm going to take 2000 RPM. I'm going to convert it to revolutions per second and then to radians per second. Once I know that, I can calculate the injection duration in seconds. And once I know that, I can calculate the total fuel injected using the fuel flow, which is in grams per second, and the amount of seconds that the injection takes place. And that will give me a value in grams, which I then convert to milligrams. And this value is approximately 18.5 milligrams of fuel injected in this one fuel injection event. Now for this example, we are going to split this injection up into a pilot injection and a main injection. And I want to deposit 20% of the total fuel through the pilot injection and the remaining 80% will be injected through the main injection. So for the pilot injection, 1.85 milligrams of fuel will be injected into the cylinder. And for the main injection, approximately 16.7 milligrams of fuel will be injected into the engine. I also need to break up my injection duration. My pilot injections duration will be 2.1 crank angle degrees. And my main injection duration will be approximately 19 crank angle degrees. I always like using the cases table to create variables because then it just makes it a lot easier if you're iterating between values and then you don't need to go into the properties of each individual object. You can just change it in the cases table. We have our main injection, start of injection, main injection duration, pilot injection, start of injection, and pilot injection duration. So those are my four variables for this multi-pulse injector. Once I've added my variables to my cases table, I can head over to my pulse shapes table and populate it. And here you can see is my completed pulse shape table. 
So I'm going to keep my injection pressure at 500 bar, the same as with the single injection one. My first inject injection is my pilot injection and my second injection is my main injection. So for the start, I input my variable start of injection for my pilot injection and start of injection for my main injection. I add a little bit of a rise, my plateau values, um, I input the necessary variables again. I add a little bit of fall gradient and then I input the mass in milligrams. Now the rise one and rise two also needs to have the same mass value. The help files are a bit vague in terms of exactly what needs to be in here, but I found that if you keep the values here the same, you get the results that you need. All right, my multi-pulse injector is now set up with a pilot and a main injection. We can again add our injector mass flow just to have a look and see again if the mass flow is correct or similar to the single injection case because I obviously want to compare the results between the single injection and the multiple injection cases. I've also gone and activated my CO emissions model. I've added a passive scalar and I've also activated the CO emissions model in my cylinder just to have a look and see what the multiple injection um, scenario does to my CO emissions. I've also changed my diesel weep combustion model to use the ignition delay model built in Ricardo Wave. So I don't explicitly state when, when start of combustion occurs. That needs to be calculated dynamically and we are ready to run the model. And here is a graph of our injection flow rate and you can clearly see the pilot injection taking place. My main injection is still at the same place or start of injection is still a bit similar to the main injection and the pilot injection is approximately 10 degrees advanced compared to the main injection start of injection and we are very close to 38 kilograms per hour so that's fairly close it's acceptable for me and here we can see a graph of the two points on our 2000 rpm x-axis where we have the single injection event at the top in red and it generates approximately 18.4 parts per million of co emissions and then when we split our injection into a multi-injection scenario, our CO emissions actually decreased to five PPM emissions. And there's a definite improvement in CO emissions when we use multiple injection strategies. Now there's a bunch of other things that you can also compare when looking at multiple injections. You can play around with the start of injection of the pilot injection and the main injection you can make the pilot injection start of injection much more advanced compared to the main injection like 30 degrees or 40 degrees making it an early injection and you can retard the main injection start of injection event as well there is a bunch of different strategies you can take to get the best in terms of performance fuel efficiency and emissions and that's it i hope you've enjoyed this video I'm available on LinkedIn and Twitter if you want to connect with me and ask any questions there. You're more than welcome to do so. You can also leave your questions in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.